Welcome back. In a previous lecture video, we saw how to construct a confidence interval estimate of the mean response for the population of all subjects possessing a given setting of the predictive variables. Now, in many situations, it's necessary to construct a prediction interval for the value of the response variable for a single subject possessing a given setting of the predictive variables. And that is the subject of this lecture video. To demonstrate how to do this, we'll use SAS Analytics Pro. We'll use PROC IML, the interactive matrix language, to implement the formulas shown in the textbook. We'll then use PROC REG, and we'll see just how easy it is to obtain a prediction interval. So let's take a look at it. To note the future value of the random variable y, y being given by x prime beta plus epsilon, at a given setting of the predictive variables x equal to x sub zero by y sub zero equal to x sub zero prime times beta plus epsilon. Denote a point predictor of y sub zero by y sub zero hat. As a point predictor of y sub zero, we will use the estimated mean of the distribution of y sub zero, which is given by y hat sub zero equal to x zero prime times beta hat, where beta hat is equal to the inverse of x prime x times x prime y. And this is the least squares estimator of beta based on a previously observed sample size of n. The estimated mean of the distribution of y sub zero is a reasonable choice as its predictor. The error in the prediction is given by the difference y sub zero minus y sub zero hat. Now in repeated predictions, this difference will take on different values from one prediction to another. It will be negative when the observed value of y sub zero is less than the predicted value y hat sub zero, and it will be positive when the observed value is greater than the predicted value. But the mean or expected value of the prediction error is going to be zero. The expected value of that difference is zero. And from that standpoint, the estimated mean of the distribution of y sub zero is a reasonable choice as the predictor of y sub zero. Now, let's look at interval prediction. Note that since x sub zero is the vector of predictive variables for a future observation, which is independent of the sample of vectors, x1, x2, and so forth, up to x sub n, that were used to calculate beta hat. It follows that y sub zero and its predictor, y hat sub zero, are stochastically independent. Now, because of that, the variance of the prediction error, the variance of y sub zero minus y hat sub zero, is given by the sum of the variance of y sub zero and the variance of y hat sub zero. And this turns out to be sigma squared times the quantity, one plus x zero prime times the inverse of x prime x times x sub zero. Now, we can't calculate the actual variance of the prediction error because we don't know sigma squared, which is the variance of the error term. But we do have an estimate of sigma squared, and so we can plug that into the formula, and when we do, we get the estimated variance of that prediction error. And so the estimated variance of the prediction error is given by sigma hat squared times one plus sigma zero prime times the inverse of x prime x times x sub zero. And you'll recall that our estimator for sigma squared is the MSC, the mean squared error, from the ANOVA table for the regression analysis. And so we, uh, that's the estimator we use. And so this gives us the estimated variance of the prediction error. We take the square root of that, and that gives us the estimated standard error of the uh, prediction error. Now, divide the prediction error by its estimated standard error. That gives the random variable shown here. So the prediction error on the numerator, y sub zero minus y hat sub zero, divided by its estimated standard error. This random quantity varies according to student's t-distribution, 
with degrees of freedom equal to the number of degrees of freedom associated with the MSE from the regression analysis, which we know to be n minus p. Now, based on this result, it follows that a one minus alpha times 100% prediction interval for a future observation, y sub zero, at a given setting of the predicted variables x sub zero is given by this formula. We start off with the point predictor, y hat sub zero, and then we go a distance to the left and to the right equal to the margin of error, the margin of error being equal to the uh, product of the interval coefficient, which comes from the t distribution with n minus p degrees of freedom, and the estimated standard error of the uh, prediction error. Now, it's convenient to have a version of this prediction interval that is expressed using notation other than the matrix formulation. The quantity under the square root sign, which again is the estimated variance of the prediction error, can be expressed in terms of the variances and covariances of the beta hats as follows. The MSE plus the sum, I going from zero up to K, where K is the number of predictor variables, of X sub zero I squared times the estimated variance of beta sub I hat plus two times the double summation where I is strictly less than J of X sub zero I times X sub zero J times the estimated covariance of beta I hat and beta J hat. Now in this uh, formula, X sub zero zero is equal to one. That's the quantity that uh, is multiplied against uh, the, uh, uh, the intercept. Now, this version of the formula is useful when the variances of the uh, beta hats and their covariances are available and matrix manipulation software is not readily available. So let's see how to apply this formula. And so here we have uh, SAS Analytics Pro opened up and I'm going to look first at a program that's written uh, using PROC IML. We're going to be looking at example 312. This again is the delivery time data. And what we are to do here is to construct a 95% prediction interval for the delivery time, which is y, when x1 is equal to eight and x2 is equal to 275. So x1, you'll recall, is the number of cases to deliver and x2, is the uh, distance that the delivery person has to walk. So a one minus alpha times 100% prediction interval for y sub zero, where x sub zero, the vector of values in, uh, at which we're supposed to evaluate y or predict y, uh, contains the values one, eight, and 275. So again, one uh, picks off the, uh, uh, inter uh, the intercept, and then x one is equal to eight, and uh, x2 is equal to 275. And so that interval can be expressed using matrix note expressions this way. So as we saw, y, zero sub, y sub zero hat uh, minus plus the product of the interval coefficient, which comes from the t distribution with n minus p degrees of freedom, and then the estimated standard error of the prediction error, y sub zero minus y sub zero hat. Now note that the estimation variance, which is the quantity under the square root sign can also be written in expanded form in terms of the variances of the beta hats and their covariances as we saw on the slide. And we're going to show that in this program. So we're going to show both methods. We're going to show both the matrix formula, uh, formulation construction, and we'll also show the uh, construction which is based on the variances and covariances. We can think of that as kind of an expanded Algebraic, uh, algebraically expanded version of that estimated variance that's under the square root side. So let's take a look at the formula. And so again, I'm going to uh, create uh, a temporary data set uh, containing that data. And uh, because the data set itself does not contain a column of ones, I'm going to create that in a data step. And then I'm going to invoke PROC IML I'm going to use that data set that I just created. So PROC IML opens up that data set. I'm going to read uh, delivery time into the Y vector and I'm going to 
uh, read these three variables, uh, the one variable, uh, the number of cases and distance into uh, the X matrix. Then I need to fit the model, right? And we've seen this uh, several times now, so we're not going to spend any time on it. It's the same code. So let me just scroll down to the section of interest. And so we're first going to look at how to construct a 95% prediction interval for Y when X1 is equal to eight, X2 is equal to 275 using the matrix calculations. And so I'm going to define uh, a vector here containing the one, the intercept, the eight for X1, the 275 for X2. Y hat is equal to the transpose of X sub zero times beta hat, right? And so that gives me my point prediction. Then what I want is the uh, covariate, the estimated covariance matrix for the beta hats. And I calculate that up above right here. All right, so that uh, estimated covariance matrix for the beta hats is equal to the product of the X prime X inverse matrix and the MSE from the ANOVA table for the regression. Now, just to make the formula a little bit easier to read and a little bit more compact, uh, I'm going to uh, copy that um, matrix into a new matrix called C. Then we calculate uh, the uh, estimated variance of the predicted value. And that is equal to uh, the MSE from the full model. And uh, again, in this particular uh, situation, we don't have a full and reduced model, but I'm carrying over that, uh, uh, that code. And so we'll just go with that. So the MSE times one plus the transpose of X sub zero times X prime X inverse times X sub zero. All right, then we take the square root of the variance and that gives us the estimated standard error. We get the T value, the interval coefficient from the T distribution. And then we subtract the product of the T value and the standard error. So that product is the margin of error for the interval. We subtract that from the point prediction and we add it to the point prediction uh, to get the lower and upper endpoints of the prediction interval respectively. Let's look at the other formulation. All right, uh, this is the formulation that uses uh, what we might call the variance expansion calculations. All right, and so uh, in this setup, I'm going to define a variable x1, all right, that's uh, equal to eight in this case, x2 is equal to 275. Then to calculate uh, the predicted value, y hat, I, I, I get the value from uh, the first entry in the uh, beta hat uh, vector, that gives me the estimated intercept, plus x1, which is eight times uh, beta one hat plus X two, which is 275 times beta two hat. All right, so that gives me the predicted value. Again, I need that uh, estimated covariance matrix. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to calculate uh, the variance using uh, the uh, expansion formula or the more expanded uh, version, right? The non-matrix formulation. All right, and so you see the calculation here and you can compare this to the formula that uh, we're given in the notes. Now, again, recall that in the notes uh, and in the textbook, they start uh, the, uh, the first uh, row and column have an index of zero, uh, zero. Uh, but we can't do that here in SAS. We've got to start at once. So you would just increment each of those indices in the formulas by one. We take the square root of that to get the estimated standard error and everything else here is the same as it was in the previous uh, section of code. And so let's go ahead and run this program and let's see what we get. And so here we have the 95% prediction interval for Y when X1 is equal to eight, X2 is equal to 275 using the matrix calculations. And we see that we get a predicted value of Y of 19.2243 approximately, right? The lower, the 95% lower prediction limit is 12.2846 approximately, and the upper prediction limit would be 26.1641. Now, using the variance expansion calculations, let's see what we get. Let's compare the results. 
So the point prediction would be uh, 19.2243. All right, so you can see those are exactly the same values as are the lower and upper prediction limits. And so that just demonstrates the algebraic uh, equivalence of those two um, different representations for the estimated variance. And so you can use either of those formulas to get the uh, lower and upper endpoints of the prediction interval. All right, next, let's look at PROC REG. And let's see how we can uh, request uh, the prediction interval uh, from PROC REG. And so the first thing I'll do here is create uh, a temporary version of the data set. And so what I've done here, again, is uh, just copy in the uh, data from the spreadsheet. I could have, uh, well, the, re the reason I'm not using, I'm not bringing in that or opening up that uh, SAS data set is because I want to make it clear. I want you to see that at the bottom of this data set, uh, as we did when we were trying to estimate the mean response at a given value of x, um, we have to add a, a, a row in here that has a missing value, which is a dot for the response. And then we have to plug in the va other values uh, of x1 and x2 that we want, or at which we want to predict y. So we want uh, x1 to be eight, and we want x2 to be 275. And so by doing this, um, SAS is going to use uh, the rest of the data to estimate the model. And then it will, when it constructs uh, predicted values and their intervals, um, it will include that last observation, which is what we want. So here's the code to do this. As far as the PROC REG code, in the model statement, uh, what we need to include is the CLI option. This uh, gives confidence limits uh, for the individual um, observations. And then we have the output statement. And we're going to uh, output the predicted values. I'll call the predicted values y hat. And then we uh, output the lower uh, prediction limits and the upper prediction limits. They call them uh, confidence limits here. All right, but this is, so that's just the, the name they give it, but I'm going to label those LPL for lower prediction limit and UPL for upper prediction limit. Okay, so we create this output data set, and then I'm going to print out uh, the contents of that output data, uh, data set, and I'm going to restrict it to just uh, the, the observation uh, that we want to see, in particular, the one where x1 is equal to 8 and x2 is equal to 275. And the other thing that I would point out is up in the invocation of PROC REG, I'm specifying the no print option uh, to suppress all of the output, because at this point, I really don't want to see that. All I want to see uh, is the predicted value, the point estimate, or the, I'm sorry, the point prediction uh, and the uh, prediction interval when x1 is equal to 8 and x2 is equal to 275. So let's run this and take a look. All right, and so we see here that we get a point prediction of 19.2243 rounded to four decimal places, and that's exactly what we got using PROC uh, IML. For the lower prediction limit, we get 12.2846. For the upper prediction limit, we get 26.1641. And so that's the exact same uh, prediction interval that we got using PROC IML. And so you can see here that it's very, very easy uh, to use PROC REG uh, to get uh, predicted values and interval predictions. All we do is specify the CLI option on the model statement. And then we can save those predicted values to an output data set and then just print those out with PROC print.